Hello there. Sorry I'm a little late everybody. I'm just in the store today and uh, yeah looking a little tired. I've been up awful early getting my work done so apologies for the appearance and um, yeah I'll give everybody a little tour later but for now hi duels for now I'm going to um, flip the camera around set up my easel and hi Amelia and we're gonna work on I know this is so exciting watching me set things up but I didn't have time to do it ahead of time um, I know I have a box of stuff somewhere You guys are coming with me on my wild little field trip here. Where is my box of art supplies? Box of art supplies. I did bring them. How could I not find them? Well, because this place is such a mess. Oh my gosh, they're right on the counter where I left them. So, this is in the store. Morning, everybody. And I am just getting set up. First thing I brought was my tripod. And I've been so busy bringing things in and working that I did not have an opportunity. I'm going to turn this around. I did not have an opportunity. To set up yet so you guys are gonna see the whole process of setting up and painting and everything so um, today is Wednesday right and on Wednesday we decided we would call it or I decided we would hi Pam I'm gonna give you the tour of the store after if you have time uh, Pam helped me out in the store and she hasn't seen it in a while, so it looks really cool. Um, it's coming. It's still a mess, but it's coming. Um, anyway, so because it's Waxing Wednesday, I thought I would work on backgrounds that would be um, suitable for, um, for obviously for traveling, but then later on would be adhered to boards and go they would be adhered to boards and then they would be um, worked in as encaustic pieces so and I also brought my wood blocks in because I'm gonna put a little paint on them a little primer on them these are the pieces that for Friday's class when we're working on the um, the eyes I just grabbed this chunk of 2 by 4 out of my garage and I think this may be kind of neat because it'll sit on a shelf so I don't even need to have like, I have some other skinnier ones that could hang on the wall. Um, thank you. So um, anyway, yeah, so this is a, um, a block of wood that just like a piece of two by four that can work as a shelf um, sitter. So this is what I'm gonna use for Friday's class. So just a little uh, recap on that while I'm setting up. I'll talk to you guys a little bit. This is the one from yesterday. I hope to finish this soon. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about um, these, the class on Friday because we're going to test Zoom. I'm not 100% sure that it can record from mobile. So um, for anybody who is, because that's my, the, my last uh, problem that I'm having with it, so we'll see if um, if we can stream it also at the same time because if we can stream it then um, it can record on Facebook so I have a few things to iron out with uh, with zoom and that sort of thing but otherwise I'm going to um, announce very soon the membership I decided it would be easier rather than selling the workshops one-off and that sort of thing um, because it gets, you know, it gets complicated, everybody having to um, pay for the class. And then if you can't attend the class, then how do you get to see the class and all that stuff. And it, the whole thing gets very complicated. So I think the stripped down easiest version of this whole thing, to me anyway, seems like we should just have a membership, which is like a private group in Facebook. And if you pay a monthly fee, 
then um, which will be um, significantly better than buying things a la carte, right? So we'll have a monthly fee and it'll include all kinds of stuff, including little videos that I make, because I make a lot of little videos all the time and we'll do it in that. So this Friday will probably be the last a la carte paid workshop. And then after that, we'll go into more of like by the month, by the group. And so you get access to everything all the time. Um, so Amelia says there's an app you can get to record from an iPhone. You can record from a laptop. Don't know what the app is called. I'll look into that because if I can record, what I was going to do is as a backup for Friday's class. See, this is how complicated it gets. As a backup, I was going to set up my my video camera because I have a DSLR camera. I was going to set that up as a video camera and just make a recording. And then that way, if worse comes to worse and I can't retrieve it afterwards from trying the Zoom, then I at least have this backup recording that I could just upload in, into um, um, a storage facility for video. Uh, YouTube or something like that so um, yeah so we'll give it a try and but this Friday will be our last um, a la carte meaning paid workshop for one class at a time after that we're going to do um, monthly content I think it'll be so much easier and it'll be uh, less for you guys to um, concern yourselves with um, buying and all that stuff hi Crystal so I am going to turn my camera down and talk as I go. There we go. Okay, so what I'm working on is mobile, um, mobile art. So what I tend to do since waxing, I decided on uh, last week that this week was going to be called Waxing Wednesday, right? So on Waxing Wednesday, we're doing things that are related to encaustic, but because we're in the uh, store today, I don't have everything with me, so I grabbed a bunch of stuff, much like as if you were traveling. So what I tend to do is when I'm traveling, I work on paper, and I work on pretty thin paper. The reason for that is because when I'm done my collages and my backgrounds and everything I work on paper, then I can just close up this, this pad of paper and tuck it away in my suitcase. Then later on when I get home, I spray the back of the paper, no matter what I've got on here, I spray the back lightly with water, and then I stack every all my pages up with a bit of parchment or wax paper in between, and then I weight it down, and then they dry really flat. Once they're dried really flat, then I can take those pieces, right, which imagining, you'll see at the end of today, a background, but it'll look just like this, and then what I do is I do glue to glue onto a board, Right, so that would be onto my substrate, and I would do glue to glue, and then I would put my background on there, press out the glue, and then I would let that dry, and then now I have a background ready board that I would translate then into a mixed media painting or into an encaustic painting. So um, I tend to, when I'm, when I'm traveling and I just need a few things, I tend to just bring a, a tiny little amount of stuff and then work on backgrounds. If I can't bring any paint, meaning I'm flying and I can't put paint or I don't have anything like that, if I'm going to a place that has a Walmart or something like that, I'll just buy some cheap paint on the go and then leave it there. So I just buy like one of their little sets of acrylics and then I'll just leave it where I'm you know, in the hotel room or wherever I'm staying. Um, so you don't want to buy very much. You don't want to spend a lot of money. And this is just on your backgrounds. So, but like this piece that I did yesterday, this was on a background that had already been done. So it's, it's, um, and it was actually a bigger board. And then the part that I wanted, I cut off using a table saw. And this was left, this last little bit. So doing the addition of the bird on this, I am going to finish up a few little things and this is going to be um, a finished little painting. So having backgrounds ready is one of my favorite things. So today we're going to do maybe um, two or three different backgrounds. I do them very quickly and I tend to do different techniques. So I'm going to show you the first one that I do. The first one is going back into um, these books that I buy at thrift stores and stuff. and 
the purpose of these uh, books is for me to cut them up. So I'm not, I'm not really so attached to the images. And if I am attached to the images, then I'm always sure to uh, make a photocopy of them first to use them. But the reality is, it's just I like the tone. Oh, like this is a great one for tone because it's got the trees in it, and then it's got the workers that are building this railroad. It's fabulous. So I'm going to use this image. Oh, I did bring a knife. There, look at that. That's not something you can fly with. There we go. So I'm just gonna take this page out and I'm going to make a background right on this page because it's a significantly um, big piece of paper. I'm not even gonna bother gluing it to um, my substrate because I might just leave it on this and then glue this to the board. Um, yeah, I don't even need to. So I'm going to start with this and I'm going to flip it around because I think you guys are seeing it that way. Okay, great. So, um, so this is where if you have Liquitex Clear Gesso or if you have um, that new one I was telling you about that I discovered is really good. Um, I, okay, I can't even say I discovered it was good because... Um, for people like Denise, who attended the um, the art camp last summer at my studio, um, Andrea Warren, uh, one of my resident artists in the studio, she works for Golden Acrylics, and she introduced us to a product that I did not bring. Um, but she introduced us to a product called... Um, oh, now I'm trying to think what it's called. It's called... Uh, it's a base, but I'll think of it anyway. It's for pastels. Oh, it's a medium ground for pastels. And what that means is that it is meant to apply tooth to a surface and be clear so that you can put um, pastels on it. So this would be a great um, time actually to address soft pastels in just a little way. Not that I have soft pastels with me, but I could talk about them because Amelia was asking me um, to remind everyone how to use soft pastels and what I would tell you is that soft pastels are um, are a fabulous tool for for working oh my god use your words Chris soft pastels are a fabulous meeting for working underneath wax whereas pan pastels when you're looking for the difference pan pastels work on top of wax so the soft pastels can also be used in the exact same way as the pan pastels on top of the wax but the bonus to them is that they can be used under the wax um, as well so I'll continue to use those maybe next week when we're talking about techniques maybe on technique Tuesday uh, maybe technique could also be material and the material that we'll talk about then would be um, soft pastels. So there, we have a topic for Tuesday. Monday we have a topic, um, which is our, our Makeover Monday. And I've chosen a painting um, based on one of our, our founding members, Tracy um, Lynch. You guys can go back and see her work. Tracy is brand new to to mixed media and to art and to everything. Absolutely brand new. And she took it upon herself to um, watch the first live video. And she was, she was amazed. And she thought, this looks like a lot of fun. So she is so brand new that she just started um, working on her first paintings. And there was one that she posted based on last week's class and she said, help, I'm struggling. And so I said, why don't we do that one as a, as a class? So you're going to see that it's very, um, her painting is very, you know, like, I don't know, it, it's, it's a common issue. Um, that is, is, I can see it right away early in her painting. It's a common issue that she's, that she's experiencing. So we're going to help her, um, get past that. So that'll be Monday, um, Thursday. So here's a fun thing about Thursday. So I didn't know what I wanted to teach you guys on Thursdays. 
until it became very clear to me last night that we are working very, very, very left brain in um, this studio. Meaning that at the beginning it started out as just me painting and it was called open studio and everybody was just going to paint an open studio and everything was going to be grand. But then what happened was it turned into a bit more of a how-to. I realized that people were asking me to help them with their skill set. So this whole thing has become very much skill set centric and that is very, very left brain. And that is not how I, when I take a class, I, I hop over into my left brain so that I can learn um, what I need to learn. But when I am actually painting for fun, which this open studio started out to be, I'm very much in my right brain and I'm just in the flow and I'm loving it and we're having fun and I'm just incorporating every bit of um, knowledge I have. I'm looking for my scraper which none of you can help me with. So um, pardon me as I fumble around here and just use this uh, piece of wood. I'll find it eventually because it's, this is improvising, right? So there you go. So all I'm doing is I'm just collaging a bit of things together and then I'm going to pull out some paint and I'm going to start to do some, don't forget this is background, right? So, um, I had never intended on on destroying this this um, this or, or preserving this picture I should say it was always meant to be a background so if anybody's gasping oh she's losing the picture it's just I wanted the tone and the color and maybe some of the trees to pop through but I'm not really actually that concerned about um, leaving this as as is so um, Anyway, so because it's very, very left and very, very right brain centric, these different things that we're doing, um, we, we've become a bit more, I think, too much, too much with all our skill set learning and all our tools and all that stuff in our, in our thinking brain, in our formulating brain. And so I want to use Thursdays and this will be an interesting thing to see um, how people react to this because I'm going to on Thursdays not take any technical questions we're not going to do anything technical on Thursdays it's just going to be about so it's gonna be called trusting Thursdays and we're just going to be trusting the process and that you already have all the knowledge you need to know to do what it is you're going to do that day so in that case, we're not going to have um, people having, you know, meltdowns about not knowing how to do something or something's not fusing or something's not cooperating or something's not. You use the skill set you have. And um, I think we should do a little exercise together on Thursdays. So it won't necessarily be a project. No, sorry, I take that back. It will be a bit of a project, but I'm not going to tell you what materials to bring to the table. I'm not going to tell you anything. You're going to trust, and tomorrow when I'm in the studio, I'm going to be in the studio again tomorrow, um, which initially I thought I was going to be here. Um, but when I'm in the studio, I'm going to show you how I find my project for the day. So I'm going to... I'm going to take you all on a journey into the scariest parts of your mind and we're going to create something. So um, who knows what that will evoke in you? I, I really, I don't know, but I'm, I'm very curious to see what happens because I'm going to take you into my process and that's sometimes I know what I'm doing when I go into my studio. And, but many times I don't, I just really have no idea. And, um, there are times when, you know, someone will call me and say, uh, supper's been on the table for three hours. I'm like, sorry. I just, I get so lost in the process that I, I just can't even begin to imagine how I would, um, have planned that. So 
tomorrow. Be prepared, kids. Thursday is going to be an interesting day. It's going to be a buckle up because I am inviting you all to participate in in the uncertain, the unplanned, the unknowing, and there are no questions and answers. So even if you ask me a question, I'm not answering it. So, and I'm laughing when I say that because that sounds entirely rude, but it's not that. It's just that you will, when on Trusting Thursdays, you will have all the answers you need to make whatever it is happen. And if you don't, you will figure it out. You will discover it. That's how I learned so many of my things. And what is just trial and error. And if something, like Sophie was telling me yesterday, that she was trying to fuse um, some black pen pastel and it wasn't working and everything else, on trusting Thursdays, so there's different things. Now, it's obviously, it helps... Um, me tremendously if you guys know the answer to these questions that people are having technical questions you can pop in and absolutely um, help rescue me on those things because I just don't have time to answer all the questions as much as I would love to um, but on trusting Thursdays that kind of a question is something that you're going to and I will teach you how to to deal with those because you will have questions I guarantee you're going to have questions but how we deal with those questions is going to be very different than how we would on another day when I say, okay, pop on the chat and we'll talk about it. Um, instead, it's going to be trusting, right? So you're going to trust that you have all the answers you need. So um, uh, I really want, I, I guess I feel ready. I love you guys. I trust you guys. And so I am ready to welcome you into my crazy little world of art making and like wholeheartedly. So that means you get the whole process and the whole process will be um, revealed on Thursdays. Um, and then the rest of the time, like I said, we'll continue on with our, um, with the process that we're doing now of, of uh, learning new skill set and practicing our skill set and stuff like that. So, this is fabric, by the way. Sometimes I use thin fabrics. Um, and the reason I use a lot of thin fabrics is because... Um, awesome, Roxanne. I'm looking forward to um, having you on Thursdays. So, there we go. So anyway, so fabrics, I tend to use a lot of fabrics because it creates... Um, automatic texture especially especially when you um, I'm gonna add it down here um, especially when you add paint on top of it so this is just a thin fabric and I'm kind of doing a little bit of color balancing but at the same time I'm trying not to apply too much um, direction and and color to these because these are my my background pieces right so you can see I'm just working on this piece I'm going to add a bit of gray and see where that takes me so if I was in my studio I'd pull out my brayer and I'd start to um, you know apply paint in different capacities and things like that but I don't have everything here so this is kind of like what you might do when you're painting on the fly or you're on vacation and you can only take a few little things with you. I paint on paper, like I said, and I make lots of backgrounds. If the backgrounds are particularly great, um, one tip, and I can show you that in probably one of my other pieces. Oh, I can show you that afterwards. I photocopy them and then I rip them up and I use them as collage sheets and other things because sometimes you just need like a little spot of trees and you're like oh there you go and then you tear that out or you're like sometimes I need a little mishmash of polka dots and because it's your own hand it's your own paint on top it's your own mark making it's your own scratches it's your own things um, it lends itself so well to a collage paper later because it it is your own hand. It's your own isms, as I always say. So now I'm going to do a bit of scratching and carving. What may want to peel back and peel back. 
Oh, I love that. That piece just folded back and revealed that little piece of a tree. That's fun. Little piece came off, so any little bits that come off, I always make sure I put them back on. So this, I just want the texture out of it, so I might put a different paint on top of it later. But paint on top of fabric, like I said, creates a great texture, and then once it's dry, you're able to really layer that up with paint and, and things like that. So, scratchy layers, and then um, what am I going to do now? So again, I don't want to make too much composition out of it, because if I make a lot of composition out of it, then that's kind of what I'm stuck with. I've got a whole lot of polka dots. I guess that was the paper I was looking at yesterday. I wanted to um, tell you that when I'm working with this, I tend to avoid putting in images in, because if I put an image in, then this is the things that cripple people so much in your artwork is because if you put an image in really early then you're like oh i really like that window and i don't want to lose it so then you're always trying to work around that window instead of saving this window for later when it might be more appropriate to put it in then you're like oh this is where it belongs so be careful with adding images way too early um i love yellowed newsprint so I tend to add a lot of that it's a perfect opportunity later on to add um, or to be a place to add text and stuff like that so vintage newsprint vintage newspaper um, it's kind of nice that it doesn't have any text on it glue to glue And remembering I'm not being super fussy about about um, arranging things or making it look lovely at this point or anything like that. I wish I could find my credit card. Um, I did have a little card here for pushing the glue out. And I can't find it. So let's just pretend that I'm doing as I say I do and I push the glue out. Okay. I'm going to add a bit more paint down here. There we go. And I'll just bring a bit of color into it. So knowing that um, I have these great backgrounds all the time makes it so much easier when I have to do a demonstration obviously for you guys or for classes and things that I'm preparing for because the background's already done but at the same time for the rest of you and also in my own practice having the great backgrounds already done for you is is um like it, it's really freeing when you do feel like cre being creative and you want to just take your images and plunk them on and make something fast so it seems um, this part is already done and it is, it's, it's really, whoops, look at how cool that tree is. Um, it's really rewarding, I find, to, to get a bunch of these done ahead of time. So I guess that's why I enjoy doing this, um, early on or when I'm traveling or something like that, because even though it doesn't feel entirely like a painting, which it's not, it does feel creative and it feels like I, I produce something that's exciting, like I actually want to get back to it. So I'm going to do a few marks. And then we'll leave that one dry. Okay, so that's one background that was done just on a book page. And um, a lot of you might know these techniques too from journaling and things like that. That's basically what we're doing. We're just making a giant journal page. But I'm happy later on, once I have these and they're all stacked and they're dried and they're pressed, um, to glue it onto a board. And if I decide to glue it onto several boards, then I just cut them up because they're on paper. And then I just glue them to my boards, glue to glue, squeegee out the extra glue, and there you have it. I can't believe I totally lost that. It was here somewhere. 
anyway, um, moving on, right? So on to the next one. So, um, isn't a blank page daunting? Like I find these the most daunting tasks, right? Is when you're staring at nothing. So that's what I'm saying. When you come back to a studio and you have like, this is the one that I did yesterday when you already have a background already done and all are done or started or something it's not white and then it wasn't a matter of um just plunking a random image down and showing you guys it in some you know in in some random context instead the image was like placed onto a background and it looks like the painting is complete and it took no time at all so um even though you've already taken the time obviously to do the background um, this is how I generally start. So this is these great little dots and circles are from a um, jelly plate. So if any of you have done jelly plate papers, um, I recommend you photocopy them and then you can use them as collage sheets over and over and over again. And if you guys haven't done jelly plates, don't worry about it. When all this is over, we will definitely get into jelly plate um, paper making because it is one of my favorite techniques. And I use it so often that I think it is worth taking at least one day a month to make some new papers. Um, and then the fun thing is, is once we start developing enough of these papers and stuff, then we can start to share and we could each send each other digital copies of our um of our papers, right? If we each submit a paper and then we have a download, then you could just print off the ones you like and then just have these great sheets of paper. So that is, if any of you are just joining, we're getting, uh, I'm just kind of talking a little bit about the membership that I am formulating in my head. So I'm thinking we'll do much of the same here um, that we've been doing, but you'll have all your workshops and your classes and everything paid for monthly in one uh, very, uh, reasonable subscription and then it's one-stop shopping and we'll be able to share all kinds of information and papers and then all the workshops will be in one location including the ability to go back and watch it um, over and over so I think stuff like that is important to have and trying all these new platforms is um, it's scary for sure um, especially when you've gotten so comfortable using our little Facebook lives um, it has been a really great tool and it's been a really great opportunity to get to know one another and to be able to work together in open studio and I want to keep that going but at the same time I'd love for it to be a bit more um, comprehensive and a bit more um, one-stop shopping. I've been talking to a lot of people lately that have, oh, so Rhonda says, darn jelly plates. I have used them and forgot to photocopy them. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, I definitely, that's one of the things that I'm always encouraging people to do is, is photocopy your great pieces because you get a lot of great texture and things out of those and you get a lot of great, um, you know, random marks that happen when you're doing these and it's very hard to go back and try to replicate that very thing. So that's why I've made tons and tons and tons of photocopies um, from my, my pages because I love having them as collage sheets. So I am just randomly starting with some, go put that thread in there, with some collage. Again, no rhyme or reason, right? I'm just putting a bunch of things down and um, creating texture because I've got lots of torn edges and I have lots of lumps and bumps and I have some fabric and I have, like I said, that thread just went in there. So I'm just creating and, I, and I'm really not placing, right? I'm not thinking you can do this when you're um, totally immersed in something else. This is like, you know, what you do when you're sitting in front of the TV. This is not concentrated work at all because you're just placing and you're just building up your texture you guys have heard me say that so many times before but I totally believe that texture in a painting 
is best when it's built up in layers rather than just like one heavy layer of modeling paste or something like that, which confines you and restricts you into what it is you're going to do afterwards. Um, what I really enjoy about the whole process of having, um, whoops, about just playing and stuff like that and building my texture is that it happens organically and I don't have to, I'm, I'm not bound by any confines or any restrictions that I've um, made for myself afterwards. There we go. So it doesn't look like anything, right? But it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's a background. Um, so my backgrounds generally tend to start with collage, but of course they don't have to, they could just be paint. They could just be, um, you could throw other things in there. Some people use sand and bark and eggshells and whatever you want to throw in there, you can throw in there. It's, um, it's all up to you. And then see if I can make some marks with my graphite pencil. This one's non-water soluble, so it won't be as interesting, but that's okay. Uh, nothing to scratch through yet, so let's throw on some paint. And you'll notice my backgrounds are always very um, light in color, and then they're balanced with a bit of uh, black. So if I do have hits of color, it's just going to be little bits that I'm able to later on um, disguise or get rid of or whatever but I generally don't start with like red backgrounds or, or yellow backgrounds or whatever because I can tint this later and easily make it into what it is I'm looking for so right now if I just keep everything very neutral and then later on I go and I float a color over it like let's say I wanted it to be red and it's dry I would then just take um, I talked to you guys before about these, or maybe you've seen them in my uh, in my Two Worlds Collide program. I often use fluid acrylics, and especially by Golden, they're very heavily pigmented. And then I thin them out with water to a watercolor consistency, and then that way you're able to stain and tint the paper once it's dry. So uh, my background, once it's dry light, I can stain and tint areas or all of it into a nice uniform um, color or bring that color in in a, a way that is not really very threatening or um, covering up a nice background so as you can see I'm being very loose with my my backgrounds leaving a bit of color but at the same time that's fun at the same time a lot of this, once I scratch through and mark it up and stuff like that, I'll end up with something more um, textural than, and more interesting texture than had I just like built this up with modeling paste or something. Modeling paste is fantastic as a layer or plaster is great as a layer within your work, but my my take is that I prefer to build with um, with lots of layers of different things. So you can see I'm just going to do some scratching, see if any of the paper wants to peel back. That part, fold that back. So again, now my, my tool being dragged through the, um, through the paper, or through the paint rather, is creating texture. So once that dries, like you've got all these lumps and bumps and valleys and everything else, that again, when I put paint on top of them, they're going to sit much differently than had I just put it on onto a flat layer of paint. So that's why I tend to do a lot of mark making early on. I'm going to take a brush and kind of flatten some of them. Again, just playing. Nothing serious. There's a little bit of red poking through or orangey color from my paper. And I think it's just enough that if I wanted to um, get rid of it later, I could. And it's just enough that if I wanted to um, highlight it later, like I wanted it to be the star of the show, I absolutely could. 
So, um, so that's really fun. And then now I could actually even add a bit more depth by using another warm color. And then the last one we used a lot of gray with this. So this time let's use this, this camel -y kind of color. I'm just going to dry brush a little on top because I don't want to flatten all my scratches. I kind of like them. And yet it's not dry enough just to dry brush and sit on top. So I'm going to bring some of that fun stuff down. And of course these need to dry for a long time before you're going to close up your, your notepad. And so a tip, if you're traveling with a pad like this, you might want to at home before you before you leave is line each page or as many pages as you can with a sheet of parchment paper and then that way if you do need to close it and you put a piece of parchment paper over top and it's not fully dry then it'll prevent it from sticking to the page on top and then who can travel with a roll of parchment paper right that's kind of awkward so if you already just put the sheet in between then it's there for you and ready when you do need it So, this is a fun background. I have a lot of paint, so I think what I might do is also create a bit more texture. I don't have anything else handy, so I'm just going to, looks like I'm circle obsessed, but um, I'm just going to put some shape other than scratches into the wet paint because it's so thick, it's gonna leave a nice little groove. How fun is that? How fun is that? So, like I said, I could get lost in making backgrounds forever because they are super fun. And later on, the rewards of having these are, like, it's it's monumental. Um, having taken the time to make some backgrounds ahead of time. So, and if you make them all out of clay-based paints and chalk paints and things like that, then you know that when you go ahead and glue it to a board that it's encaustic ready as well. Um, traveling with your chalk paints and stuff like that is not as convenient, obviously, but it's um, definitely, um, there's, there's a workaround, right? So you can always figure that one out. This might be a bit premature to be putting in this collage paper but since it's like flying around on my table here I'm going to use it and I'm going to put maybe this part over and I'm just using this in wet paint I can't put any glue under it because it is so soggy um where should I put that one right there hello a little gold dot okay so that is like I said, in a nutshell, those are two different backgrounds, and once they're dry, these are great to cut up and put them into different things, mount them onto different size boards, photocopy them, use them as your own collage sheets, um, or just actually, for those of you who make a lot of paper or a lot of paint, oh my goodness, a lot of paintings. Um, I know myself, I'm very prolific, so sometimes I just feel like I have you know, a thousand canvases sitting around and that's what, that's the, the, the like that's how it seems. Um, so you can actually just finish these as paintings and then put them in one of those plastic sleeves. And then if you sell your work, just sell it as is. And then that way it's much easier to be in a, a binder of work and to sell your work on paper. Um, so yeah, this is what I do on the fly. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm gonna flip the camera back around so we can chat. Um, okay, so ooh, and I'm getting paint all over everything. So because I'm not in a studio, obviously I don't have access to everything, including, um, well, I do have a little bathroom sink, but I'm going to take you guys for a little tour of the store, even though it's very messy, so don't hold that against me. And um, But first we have to visit the bathroom because I need to wash my hands. Um, okay, so here we go. Let me take that off the tripod. 
Rhonda says, I just love your natural inhibition and natural intuition. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, but that's what I want to teach you guys on Thursday. It's not that I want you to... Okay, bad phrasing. I'm not going to teach you that on Thursday. I'm going to help you access that every Thursday because I believe that... Um, like I said, here we are in the bathroom. Um, go flip the camera. There we are. Cute little mirror, right? Um, okay. Wash my hands. Sorry, I know this is a weird little part of Facebook Live, but I didn't bring any baby wipes. Okay, now the other hand, one at a time. All right. Okay, let's go on a little tour of the store. So... Sometimes you guys see Judy Anderson on the feed. Judy is my business partner. And uh, we opened this little shop at Christmas time last December. And it's called a Curated Nest. And it has a combination of all my favorite things, which is um, vintage and uh, like vintage goods and home decor, and then of course, uh, fashion. I love clothing, so when uh, you guys commented on my shirt, that's the kind of stuff that we do around here. So I've got lots of clothing, that's all on my website, but don't purchase anything just yet because I have uh, discount coupons for everybody. If anybody does see anything at any point, we can do lots of tours, store tours. Um, so yeah, so this is the vintage, but this side, like I said, I'm, I'm just working on this right now. We opened kind of shotgun, I would call it, at Christmas time, and it was really fast. And now with this lockdown, I've had time to come in and actually do the displays that I love to do. Um, so if Rochelle is watching, if you guys ever see Rochelle um, Gockel, she is from Vancouver, and she makes beautiful jewelry and so i have a lot of her pieces in the store and then yeah you can see displays are half done <laughs> i'll get it all finished one day but um yeah by the time we reopen it'll all be done so this is my new spring stuff and so when i talk about art being everything i hope pam is watching because pam helps me out in the store is setting up but because of lockdown she hasn't been able to see everything so we got a little awning up here now pam and then you guys see these so these are actually old hubcaps that i did image transfers on but look at the gorgeous patina in these hubcaps not gorgeous it's like rust but there's also gold in there and then white paint and I just think they're incredible so I had those photographed um, and then turned into prints um, thanks Pam so you do see it so this is one of them this is one of the displays this is this great old table I worked on okay so now we'll move away from that display and I'll come back to this one so this one is taking on a bit more here's some encaustic guys so these are my encaustic animals and they have their little boots on so I've been working on a new series of, of encaustic animals but their bodies are concrete and then their boots are encaustic and then um, Thanks, Rhonda. And then uh, I have these little art blocks, these little encaustics that I make, and then I hang them on the wall. So I have that kind of stuff going on in here. I'll show you Judy's art in a minute. So because our store is so tiny, more vintage stuff, and then all kinds of little fun things. Let me turn that on so you can see little LED roses. So cute. So yeah, so we have all kinds of fun little things. And then I make all these, these bird cage lights, which I just adore. Every time I get another bird cage, I turn it into another lamp. Are the hubcaps and caustic? No, they're actually they're just a, an image transfer. So all I did was. Um, uh, I found the hubcaps as is, well, I found them, I bought them in an antique store, and then I put the um, uh, and cost, the clear gesso on them, and then I did a, a, a paper transfer on top of them, a gel medium transfer. 
And then this is the store with, this is my art corner. So these are my, my nests. You see them on my website. And then these are my chairs with little birds on them. So anyway, and then this is the cute little, I'll get back so you can see that display. So we got all kinds of stuff for spring and now that we're going to be opening, it's going to be summer again, I'm sure. But anyway, keeping everybody safe. Oh, I have a light I can turn on. A little vintage lights and things like that. Um, so I do redo a lot of things as well. So I ripped off these old lampshades and then I made my own out of um, uh, vintage fabrics that I found. So a little window display. Somebody out walking their dog. How about my old nests? So I found uh, every year there's a robin's uh, a robin's nest in our eaves trough, and they always kick it out. So it's funny. I get a new nest, and then I put them into these vintage things, and then I make these little clutch domes with them out of vintage birds. Coming over to this side, same thing. Isn't it exciting, Pam? I hope you get to come in sometime soon. Um, so this little display needs artwork, but we're working on that right now. So, and then we have a great settee in here. This is another kind of thing that I do is reupholster, but also refinish and paint and distress. So that's kind of fun. And then I'll come back to the door when you're coming in. We have... Oh, I'm glad you're liking it, Pam. I can't wait till you can come in and help me. <laughs> and all our summery stuff. I have my poor little plants on the floor, which I have to put in the sunlight. Okay, let's keep going around. So this display I'm still working on. Oh, since Pam's in the chat with us right now, we can show this. Is, these are Pam's adorable paintings. Right? So these are Pam's little pieces of art. Could you not just gobble those up? So also, Rhonda, good good news. We're that's the one thing that my um, uh, we've been working really hard on in the store is we're trying to turn the entire store into a. Um, uh, here, let me get this display a little bit, only because you've got to take in some of this artwork. So I've got more to do in here, but it's. Um, this artwork is by a local artist named Bev Thibault and she she's an incredible artist and what's fantastic about her is she um she just picked up a paintbrush I don't know she's a retired lady she picked up a paintbrush in her retirement and just decided she would just make some art so she hasn't been at it very long I think this is maybe her second year painting and she's completely not trained. So um, I just, I, I really love her work and I love that she finally heeded the call and is doing the work. So um, anyway, so what we are doing is we are, are working really hard to get the store vintage. You know, it's funny because I actually, I don't sleep all that well. So yeah, to answer your question, um, I do have a lot of energy. I I have always been very, very fueled by creativity. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you guys stayed with me for the tour. Um, like I said, I have a lot of, uh, of work to go, but at least I was able to, to show you a little bit of that. Um, oh, these cards. So if any of you are, you're probably familiar with Sacred Bee. So Sacred Bee cards, look them up online because they have incredible art. Can you guys see that? Sacred Bee. The artist is Pamela Zagorinsky and her, her messages and her poetry and her art combination. It's just to me, it's one of the most beautiful things. I love art like that. Anyway, so yeah, that was the tour and we're working very hard, as I was saying, Rhonda, to get the store um, online. So I keep 
taking pictures and then you know that's why the whole store got redone um was because i've been pulling everything down and photographing it and doing the description and blah 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 so um i hope very soon to launch with our first 200 products and then after that um we'll grow from there so um yeah so it'll be ever changing and um yeah i really look forward to uh, welcoming people back into the place because it's it's been kind of quiet but at the same time like I said a much needed uh, time to actually give the store and, and to, to give it the justice it deserved because it was pretty shotgun put together so I'm really happy that uh, in a way that I had this break and the time to to do it properly anyway thanks everybody I'm gonna turn this around and say see you tomorrow so tomorrow remember there's no preparation there's no preparation because whatever you have in front of you is exactly what you need. Okay, bye. Thank you.